I came to Tinker Racers wanting and expecting a budget Micro Machines experience. Tinker Racers provides one to four players local multiplayer racing. You can have up to seven AI bots. There's 24 circuits across three different areas of your house. And all of that sounds really great on paper. However, when it's put into practice, Tinker Racers forgets some of the key things that are required in a racing game to make it a truly enjoyable experience. The formation is here, the execution isn't quite right. What Tinker Racers does well is provide a variety of choice to play. You've got time trial experience, you have single player experience, multiplayer, and also a difference between purely racing and also the survival racing, which is the main mode that you need to play to unlock all of the tracks. In survival mode, each car has 100% life, and every time you hit an object on the track, but strangely not your own opponents that you're battling against, you will lose damage, uh, or you'll take damage, sorry, to your car. If you fall off the back of the screen, then you're out for that round, very similar to the original Micro Machines games that we all know and love. But also, if you fall off the track, you'll also lose health. But because the respawning is quite quick in Tinker Racers, say if you was at the front of the screen and you was about to win and you fell off, you'll respawn about four-fifths towards the back, and it gives you that opportunity to keep going and to try and eke out that round for as long as possible, maybe regain back up to your competitors and still win. Survival racing works really well, but the problem is, is that the AI only has one difficulty level, and the AI isn't well mapped to the tracks. So as the courses slowly kind of move around and not deconstruct themselves but you've got all of these different things like building blocks or staplers or bouncing beach balls that can as you hit them they move they'll get in the way of what's going on in the track and the AI cars don't really respond particularly well to that and so they'll just drive headfirst into things cause them self damage slow them down they then fall off the back of the screen and it makes it quite an easy win this is especially noticeable when you're playing in single player races um, where you aren't falling off the back of the screen and then having like you're removed from the round. It's like a five lap race instead. And so they just fall further and further and further behind. And I wasn't expecting to be lapping AI cars in a five lap race um, around the kitchen. So yeah, a bit of a weird one that. The other problem that I have with Tinker Racers, well, two problems I should say. The first one is around the handling. It's not terrible, but it doesn't give you any give, if that makes sense. So it's very point and square and all on or, or nothing on. And that's with the accelerator and the brake, but also with the turning. So it feels like you're turning without really being connected. It almost feels a little bit like um, RC cars, where the wheels aren't really connected to the ground and so you don't feel that purchase and so things just kind of glide around and it's not satisfying. The second issue that I have with Tinker Racers, which is a bit more egregious, is that every few seconds the game drops frames. And this is on the PS4 version I was given a code to review for, uh, of which thank you to the developer. But I would say as soon as you have eight cars on screen, it drops a frame or two. As soon as you turn a corner and it's having to reload those cars back into the screen, you lose a frame or two. Something gets hit and some bricks go flying or a marble goes across a screen, you lose a frame or two. And that happens literally every 10 seconds, easily every 10 seconds. And it didn't matter what mode I was in, what track I was on, it still did it. So for me, it feels like Tinker Racers is trying to do more than what the game engine is programmed to allow it to do, or that the programming isn't neat enough for it to be able to load in textures and compute different physics going on, because it's always whenever something happens that isn't purely just racing forward. So that kind of mars the experience. Add to that clunky, like one of the most clunkiest menu systems to get round uh, and select your mode and track as possible. It always defaults to the last track that you unlocked. So if you want to go and play the very first track, you've got a, a shoulder trigger through 24 tracks to kind of get back to it again. And then choose your mode, and then it will just dump you after you've played that track right the way back at the end of the menu again. And you're like, no! Um, it doesn't feel like it's really designed to be 
fun uh, and repeatedly played is what I would say. Some quality of life features I think would really help Tinker Racers do very well around the menus, around making sure that it doesn't drop frames all the time uh, and having difficulty uh, levels with the AI I think would be super helpful as well because there's like good seeds of a game here but the cheap level design followed by the cheap way how um, the game seems to want to fall over on itself mars the experience to the point where I can't outwardly recommend this really to anyone um, and there are better games out there that do a very similar job um, and it's worthwhile paying that extra two to three pounds more for the quality of product that you therefore get in return. So a written review of this will be over on highplanegames.com over the weekend. Until then, happy happy racing! Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.